Austin, Texas is a long way from Hollywood, but the team at Edge of Reality, based in the capital of the Lone Star State, are keeping in touch with the Incredible Hulk film crew, including director Louis Leterrier, as they bring to life the video game adaptation of the film. And we got to spend uh, a lot of time with, uh, with Louis and Kevin going over and show them you know, the, the latest that we had and get their feedback and, and input. Louis was able to actually sit down with me and kind of look at the game, see where we were. It was pretty inspiring to see that they were having fun with it. They were able to give us some great feedback that we can get into the game to make it more consistent with what they're doing in the whole for the movie. Developing games based on movies can be extremely challenging. There are always a lot of hurdles to overcome. It just takes longer to do a video game, and you need different things at different times. And so, you know, syncing up those timelines, sometimes it works out great, sometimes, you know, a thing here slips through the cracks. Particularly when you're working with a movie game, you kind of have to work backwards, because the, the thing that's set in stone is this will ship with the movie, because we want everybody coming out of the movie theater excited about Hulk to be able to pull this off the shelf and play it at home. Sega's like been, you know, pitching in a lot and trying to make sure that it meets you know, the needs of gamers, telling them where to go and how to do it, but then also has that, that feel of the, um, of the film itself and, and being able to deliver on that. However, as many challenges as a movie tie-in can present, making big games based on big movies also has its rewards. Being able to do a creative project without limits can actually sometimes be quite choking because you don't know what to do first. So what you do is you accept sort of the frame, the, the, the constraints on what you're doing. And that's an ingredient, and a lot of times that can spark creativity. We're building our CG version, they're building theirs, and there's some back and forth, and we want to get reference and pass it back and forth. The movie guys take a look at the what the game's doing, and, and so we've you know gone through some iteration and revisions. Marvel is there with us, you know, the whole time, giving us advice on what sort of directions they might want to see. We've been working with Marvel pretty closely on these characters, and they've been supplying us with um, concept art and uh, renders of their characters. Although the game follows the story arc of the film, it also has to expand on the story in order to offer more interactive experiences. We definitely want to exploit and, and leverage and take advantage of any of the material that's out there that's not just film-based, but that takes people to places that, you know, 120-minute film can't do. Taking our own content, our own storylines, and working with us to figure out how it fits in with this, the reality of the movie and the truism of the Marvel Universe. Everyone's been so enthusiastic and, and really helpful in terms of trying to find places where the game and the movie can kind of cross-pollinate with each other. With the solid partnership between filmmaker and game developer, Marvel and Sega have ensured a product based on mutual respect, admiration, and constant collaboration. Rated T for Team. Sega. Marvel really has led the way in terms of taking their brands and blowing them out and making them ubiquitous everywhere. Our relationship with Marvel has been awesome. We've got a lot of people here that are really familiar with the Marvel Universe and actually the Incredible Hulk. I am a major Marvel fan, uh, especially when it comes to the Hulk. I think they've developed some of the best comic book characters in the world. Edge Reality, what they bring to it is a real passion of understanding of what the Hulk is, and I think that's something that is really going to be true to the film, too, and I think that's where the connection was for me, is the fun and playful side, the intense action, the anger. Like, there's a lot of different things that are, are, are fun and cool about the Hulk, and I think they understood that, and I think that's something that's you know going to go across both the movie and the game. With the impending feature film release of The Incredible Hulk in June 2008, Marvel needed a partner that could bring to life a video game interpretation of their Green Goliath. Marvel has dominated the comic book video game market for the past several years, and in order to maintain their reign, they turned to publisher Sega. This particular franchise, The Incredible Hulk, I think it's a, it's a great meeting of, of, the, of these two uh, um, companies at, at the right time. The acquisition of this license and a few others really um, coincides with our reemergence as a publisher. Marvel's a great brand, they have a great cast of characters, and we knew that we had to be in that business. 
With the strategic publisher in place, the next step was securing a developer that was up to the challenge of creating a game based on the incredible icon. Edge Reality uh, became a very obvious choice to do the Hulk video game. We looked at uh, eight, ten developers or so, and they had an amazing understanding and passion for the Hulk. Edge Reality has definitely got a history of taking movies and, and working with the team making the movie and finding out what's the essence of the movie, what's, what's the core there that's going to get people excited about it, what is the movie trying to explore, and then importing that to a game and then exploding it out and letting the player take that theme and explore it in the whole venue of a, of a much larger game. They knew what to do with the character, they had a bunch of great ideas that they wanted to bring and, and updates to the franchise. It was uh, one of the most impressive game pitches I've seen. I think they put together a really spectacular package where they, they really showed you know, that they understood and knew what was great about the Hulk game franchise um, as it stood in the last generation and then what they were going to do to bring it to the next generation with um, some really great improvements. What we really wanted to focus on was the, the end result. I mean, what, what's really exciting is actually being able to play the Hulk. And so we really focused on that aspect of it. With the trifecta in place, Edge of Reality now had to deliver on their prompts. They're actually building the engine that we're using from scratch. It's something that they're making themselves. So what they're doing for us is giving us the ability to have a fully interactive Manhattan and making it fully destructible. You not only you can move across vertical spaces like on the ground, you can go up and down, and there's day and night cycles, so it's going to feel like a living, breathing city. Developing a high-profile property is not only exciting for the publisher and developer, but it can also have some unexpected benefits. As a studio, having a high-profile game like this is going to enable us to also attract a lot of high-caliber talent. Just like the roster of characters assembled on the pages of comic books, Marvel and Sega have selected a talented team of video game developers who know what makes the Incredible Hulk tick. Rated T for Team. Sega. The Incredible Hulk video game has its roots in the 1960s when Stan Lee and Jack Kirby unleashed one of the world's biggest comic book characters. When you take something that's a combination of Frankenstein and Jekyll and Hyde, how could it not be good? 62 and 63 were really big years for Marvel, where Stan Lee and company produced quite a number of our major icons. I think the Hulk is our most childlike character in many ways because, you know, he's, he's all about impulse and about he's just one walking id. And, and basically, if the Hulk wants to smash, the Hulk will smash. One of the funnest things to do in a video game is to destroy stuff and to, you know, blow up stuff. And Hulk is the kind of character that just, that's all he's about. When it came to the philosophy behind the Hulk's <laughs> origins, Stan Lee turned to science. You may not suspect this, but I am not the world's greatest scientist. When I got to the Hulk, I said, well, the cosmic rays worked out pretty good. What other kind of rays are there? And I said, gamma ray sounds good. So I figured there'd be a gamma ray bomb and he'd be exposed to that. Now, I have no more idea what a gamma ray is. Than, I mean, it, but it sounds good. Many fans relate to the tragic and persecuted character, and Stan Lee is right there with them. I don't know who's more tragic, Bruce Banner, who is so deathly afraid of becoming the Hulk, or the Hulk, who is so endangered all the time, and also hates Bruce Banner and doesn't want to be Bruce Banner, and you wonder how we can sympathize with him? He's the most pathetic monster on Earth. Either the monster's trapped inside of him or he's trapped inside the monster, and he goes back and forth and uh, really can't control it. But it's, it's, you know, it's all about anger management. You know, you drop him into a situation, drop him in the middle of a city, what happens? I mean, that's just the great thing about him. He's, he's kind of a, you know, he's a demon in a bottle and he just blows up and you don't know what's gonna happen. And so that's the thing we really have to pay off on in the video game is being able to drop him in there and, and see what happens. The only remaining item on Stan Lee's list for this new character was a catchy name. I gave him the name The Hulk. And I said, but it seems to need something. I said, how about The Incredible Hulk? 
and the next installment will examine the relationship between licensor Marvel, game publisher Sega, and game developer Edge of Reality, and how all three came together on The Beast Within, the making of The Incredible Hulk. Sega. The immense amount of effort it takes to animate characters in a video game is often overlooked and taken for granted by the public at large. But many, many hours of blood, sweat, and tears are shed here, in this room. It is the animators that breathe life into these virtual characters, and one look at the Incredible Hulk in action proves just how talented the animators at Edge of Reality truly are. We usually animate um, anything that has to be kind of smooth, and the second it actually hits an object, that's when we turn it into the physics object, so that since it's, such, it's going to be such an abrupt change, uh, it's a great place to do the little pop, and, and you don't notice it so much. We have uh, keyframe animation, so our animators uh, hand animate everything. One of the things that keyframe animation gives us as opposed to motion capture is since the Hulk is the player's character um, and you're controlling the Hulk, we can animate to the feel of the controller and make sure that the feel is really good. So um, a guy in a motion capture suit can move like a human, and that's about it. He's not that fast. He's not that powerful. So that really doesn't come through. So we're able to have fine control over the poses and the speed and the quickness of the player in order to have really great responsive control. Unlike traditional human characters featured in video games, the animators at Edge of Reality had to work with the larger-than-life beast. So where best to start? than the Incredible Hulk's closest real-world counterpart. We've hired bodybuilders to come in, and we took a lot of pictures and a lot of video of them flexing their muscles and getting into poses that are actually similar to some of the moves that Hulk does. The next-generation technology of the new video game consoles also gave the artists more power when it came to creating their characters. One of the biggest benefits that we get in the next-gen technology is normal mapping, and that gives us the ability to show the muscles. Uh, when I first started building the rig on this character, um, one of the things we wanted to add is, is since he's so big and he's got all these huge muscles, we wanted to make sure that all those things looked really realistic. And so we um, not only are we able to stretch the limbs and everything, but we're also able to animate all those muscles and make them shake and make them flex. And you'll see that and come through in the game and how realistic his flesh really looks when he's animated. And it actually lights, and so the, you'll, as the light hits it, you actually see the lighting and the shadowing uh, roll over those muscles. We never used to be able to do that before. Animating can have its limitations, so in order to avoid repetitive scenes, the animators blended their work alongside the physics engine. One of the great things about the physics in the game is that everything kind of seems to bounce off everything naturally. If we were to animate that, that one thing blowing up, you'd see the same animation over and over again. Things will bounce off each other, and it'll feel different every time, and it actually makes the world much more interactive and feel like you're really uh, affecting the world as opposed to just playing animations over and over in the game. The animations and real-world physics enables the player to tap into the raw power of the Incredible Hulk. Rated T for Teen. Sega. My favorite Hulk moment was very early on, probably in the first issue, when he first turned into the Hulk. Because I had told Jack Kirby, who was the artist, great artist, I had said, now remember, I want to get this man to become a huge, strong-looking monster, but he still has to look man-like and not too gruesome. You know, he's almost a good-looking monster, but he's not really good-looking. And I figured, what is Jack possibly going to do with that? And when he drew the change from Bruce Banner to the Hulk, I just loved it, and I'll never forget that. Showing the Hulk really getting enraged and being able to do things that are, you know, above and beyond even, you know, the rest of the Marvel Universe. I mean, he's just, you know, he is the strongest there is. Hulk can weaponize anything in the environment that he can come across. We're going to throw you right in the action. The Incredible Hulk is all about rage and destruction. So in order to bring this unique character to life, the development team at Edge of Reality in Austin, Texas, began with the basics. There's definitely the signature moves that the Hulk does, the big ground pound move, sonic clap move. 
pick up pedestrians and throw them across the street and picking up a, a taxi cab and smashing into a building until the building comes down. Complementing these classic moves, Edge of Reality has introduced an accomplishment system known as feats. Well, as you um, go through these feats, you need to earn a certain number of them, and let's say it's four. When I hit the number four on the feats, it will unlock a certain ability uh, in the game or give me access to new things in the game that I didn't have before. In addition to the feats, the Incredible Hulk can also use the environment to his advantage. Climbing on the building is actually really fun and easy to do. He can weaponize a lot of stuff. He'll learn to use new weapons as the game goes on. He can take down a street lamp and then pick it up and use it like a baseball bat. Then you pick up the pole and you throw it like a spear. He has this uh, kind of bull rush move. We get your rage meter high enough and he's just kind of sprinting through uh, the streets in New York and anything that comes in his path just doesn't, doesn't survive. He can rip a bus apart and then he'll have like two pieces on each hand and he can punch with them and, and throw things around that way. Everyone wants to take down a building sometimes and everyone wants to be able to smash robots halfway across the city. He creates a lot of damage. In order to provide the Incredible Hulk with such a huge playground, the development team had to tackle perhaps the biggest challenge of them all. It's an open world kind of gameplay in Manhattan. So go and do whatever you want. You have this city that is filled with an enormous amount of content. Go and do stuff, and we'll have the city react to whatever you just did. It's one thing to build Manhattan, you know. Um, it's another thing to build a Manhattan that can be fully destructible. We're being able to make a much more alive and full New York City uh, than we had ever before. So we've got a full New York City. You can go and explore. You can, you know, smash. You can do missions inside it. You can go and help people. You can throw taxi cabs, whatever it is you like to do. We've actually purchased a model of Manhattan from a company that does work for NASA and for other government agencies. And we're basing New York City on that. So our Manhattan is extremely realistic. This real world Manhattan may have been a huge undertaking, but the end results are more than worth it. You're gonna be able to climb to the top of a building and knock somebody off and pick up a piece of debris and throw it down, jump down, follow it, create a crater in the ground and uh, essentially wreak havoc in the city. Rated T for Teen. Sega. The Incredible Hulk has captured the hearts and imaginations of fans around the world. And in order to bring these characters to life in the video game, Sega enlisted many of the film's stars to reprise their roles. Pick me up! Everything about this is something I'm enthusiastic about. Take the two of them to the chopper, confiscate everything. Dr. Stearns? We expect your full cooperation. Welcome to the Army. It seems unlikely, you know, that you know the artiste is going to do the comic, but that's not comics or art. It's our last option, but we can't do it with Enclave's constant interference. To come in here and do something I've never done before was a blast. I, I thought it would be cool to be a character in one, and, and also the idea of my kids can be me in this. It's not what you've done, it's what you're going to do. I want what you got out of Banner. I think it's just a big hoot. I think it's seriously good fun. This is Blonsky. I'm switching vehicles. To round out this impressive cast, Liv Tyler returns as Betty Ross, daughter of General Ross, and love interest to Bruce Banner. Bruce? Blonsky's destroying the city. Aren't you gonna do something? Anything? Acting for a video game can be challenging, especially for a group of actors new to this experience. And the moments when, when it was a scene, I just went and played the character. And I found it remarkably easy to do that. I agree. That's why I've authorized you to receive the full treatment. I'm taking the gloves off now. It's slightly different, but actually, it's it's ultimately all about being clear for the person who's playing the game. Well, we could elevate your gamma levels. 
it's a really interesting and specific muscle that you're using just to make the information clear for the person playing the game who needs the information clearly and quickly so that they can accomplish the task. Do you think you can cure me? I'm very confident, Bruce. Now, did you bring the blood sample? I can't get accurate data from your blood sample. Something's interfering with my analysis. The source must be close. Can you find it and move it out of range? Otherwise, I won't be able to finish. But performances in video games also call upon the actors to deliver more primal reactions. When we got into the indiscriminate generic grunts and stuff, then I was at a loss. I like the grunting stuff. The collaboration between the filmmakers and video game developers has ensured an immersive extension of the Incredible Hulk franchise. One of the funnest things to do in a video game is to destroy stuff and to, you know, blow up stuff. And Hulk is the kind of character that just, that's all he's about. No matter what medium you find him in, the Incredible Hulk leaves an indelible mark. For he is human at heart, and that is what connects him to humanity, even in his monstrous form. In the end, the Incredible Hulk is an enduring character, and many would say an inspiration. Absolutely Hulk is a hero. His power is great, and what better way for fans to experience it than in a video game? By becoming the Incredible Hulk.